So cars on the circuit for the PBS Brakes Hot Hats Championship. Interesting to see the different evolutions of, uh, of, of the Honda Civic uh, over the years. I remember Civics back in the 1970s. <laughs> I've got a right sweat on, but that no, was good. It's good fun. sideways moment for somebody there the leader up at clearways the leaders coming up to the line now dive up the outside as well he can help break these guys and even they go shooting fast oh he's got a mini in front of him that was really tight as he came across the red mini and uh, well that was good reflexes i'll tell you that much Traffic as well, they've got to do with Marcus. Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? They've really got to work hard. But it's uh, to see now from that driver's perspective from uh, Dan Sylvester's car. They're going to try to second guess where the, uh, where the slower cars are going to go. They can't evaporate, that's for sure. It's a race, wasn't it? Sick. If you enjoy these videos, please leave a comment and like the video. If you really like these videos, please follow the link in the description to the Patreon page, become a part of the channel and help me fund future content. Good morning from Brands Hatch, you'll be used to this view if you watch the testing video. If you didn't watch the testing video, you won't know. We did all the testings in the MR2 and the Civic yesterday. Today we're racing the Civic in the 750 Motor Club Hot Hatch, so we're hoping for a good performance today. Obviously we had a we had a good performance in the first round, we qualified on pole and then we finished third in the first race and second in the second race and I've done quite a lot to the car. If you've not watched my videos working on the car, maybe you want to go and have a look and see what I was up to. But basically we've made the front a lot softer, we've fitted a bigger exhaust, bigger intake, changed the tune a bit, gained a lot of mid-range power. We've done a little fiddly jobs here and there, some little tidy ups. Can have a better look at the CP3 this morning? Phew, that is... Wow. Some trendy cars racing today. We've got all the usual Clio's and Civics and all that stuff, but also the DC2, which we saw briefly at Donington, but also a Carado. Yes, some trendy, trendy 90s cars. We've got the 205s. There's a lot of cool stuff racing today. So we've got classic stock hatch as well. We've got the Clio's racing, Type R Trophy, and the Hot Hatch. Right, it's time to go and get queued up for qualifying, sound tests, and all that. I need to get me, me gear on. Yes, I do. It's, uh, it's a bit chilly actually, you know, but hopefully it'll be alright. I've gone a bit higher on the tyre pressures than, than what I normally would for racing. We've got brand new on the front, don't forget. Um, I think it'll be a case of just trying to find a gap and then going for a time, etc. And just, if I'm not on a lap, just kind of wind back a bit and try and manage the time. With it being Brands Indy, it's the shortest lap on the calendar, so we get plenty of time to piss about. So hopefully um, we can find a lap and do it. We'll probably get about 14 laps in, maybe 15 laps. So plenty of chances, right? Let's go and see what we can do. This is the rush, so I've not made qualifying, but everyone's already gone. A bit late, but we're all good. Yeah. Yeah, he's got, he's got no drivability. Uh, 
the wide band, does that help? Right. You got your pin out of the extinguisher? We made a slight miscalculation and we're right at the back. Oh, is it like you're literally the last car? One of the last cars, yeah. They did call you 10 minutes earlier than normal. Well, it's only, you've got 20 minutes to go even now. What time? That's 15 minutes. Yeah, it's 9 minutes. Just go in there. Helmet. Uh, yeah. Got it? I don't feel as nervous as normal. Maybe that's a good thing or a bad thing. Feel pretty good in the car. Feel pretty good about the track. Weather's nice. Just need to... Um, get a low 53 on here that would be a, a good time and a good time good times I just need to try and find space and that is a very hard thing to do at Brands Hatch wow look how far down the pit lane we are ah uh, well struggling a bit. Oh, the car off into the gravel. Let the car cool down a little bit. So, still struggling with the front end. Maybe try some stuff in the dampers for the race. 
We've done a 53.6 which is pretty good but would like it to be a bit faster than that. Five, five. Still pushing so much. Uh, well, I mean, I can kind of be happy with the time, I guess. But well, the car drove all right. It's just still not got the front grip. So uh, I've got a different rear roll bar we can try. We'll have a look at the. Um, oh no, the EG's off there. Look. We can have a look at the um, damper click. I'm not really fiddled with the dampers, they're two way, so you know, we can maybe reset them and measure what they're at and then reset them or something like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, 
not overly happy with my front grip. But hopefully that time was good enough for somewhere near the front, but we need more front grip. Massively need more front grip. Yeah, not overly impressed with the car, with the front traction, but could be better, could be worse. I need to stop saying that, we need to make it better, fuck fucking being worse. It is what it is, but we can make it better, right? We need to make it better. Tempted to put the 225s back on front, because it definitely felt probably better on the brakes for the 225s at the front. The brakes were pretty weak, I don't know if it's because it's less tyre to, to grip on, but I have a debrief now with the team. Right, qualifying session complete. A bit more hairy than what I would have liked, passing some of the other cars, but yeah, we got we got away with it. So, pit crew assemble. Got Josh on the data. We've got Chris, Tom, and Simmons. Uh, they're just doing some. What's what you found? The the air guide that we fitted has just gone a little bit skew it. Off yeah, and we're also going to check what the dampers are set to and just make a note and then maybe work back from that. We'll see on the two ways, maybe a bit softer on the front on the compression. I guess it'll be one, it'll rebound yeah. or what. But I don't know which knob does what. Yeah, well, the bottom's compression, top's rebound. Bottom's compression, yeah. top's rebound. It doesn't, I, I tried to find it out, but I couldn't yeah. find it. Nah, it's naff. So I think we'll just cut them in half. It was like 20. 16 I had it, we'll maybe go 10 eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what we're it needs to go way softer. Also gonna put the 225s back on the front. Now, I would say the grip wasn't too different. I mean, it still obviously started pushing a lot and that's a lot to do with the front being too stiff, but the braking performance wasn't as good. So I was locking the rear quite a lot, especially into Grey Mill. I never had one good entry into Grey Mill in that session, so. I'm blaming the uh, the braking performance and maybe the turning from the extra bit of meat on the 225s might help there too. So, And then we should be good and we qualified second in the end. So we managed to get a quicker lap towards the end, 53.55 was the time. So I'm pretty happy with that. I know I can probably go a bit faster. My optimal was a 53.1 again. So, you know, we've, we've, we've had the same optimal twice now. So yeah, yeah it looks like the little grass excursion might have... Uh, might have hampered my uh, brake cooling, but the brakes felt consistent and good. There's no no wobble anymore like there was with the older pads. So yeah, the Type R A pads are, uh, are definitely definitely an improvement. So Tom's prepping the wheels, getting all the shit off of them, putting a bit of tape over the uh, wheel weights. They were starting to fall off a bit, so a bit of foil tape. Just just increasing the rear ride height. Now this is something that I meant to test yesterday, but we're just going to test it in race one. Basically, the 225.50s on the front are a lot taller than 205.50s on the rear. And I think that could be a lot to do with why it's handling a bit strange. They're not taking full advantage of the front tyres because it's sending a lot of weight to the rear. Uh, we'll see how it gets on. Obviously, we're, we're changing quite a lot. We've got the full softer rear. Um, hopefully softer rear anyway. And a, and a bit of rake as well. So hopefully the car, if you can see it, hopefully the car will be a lot better now. Clear sports, clear sports, please. Can I have car? You getting alright? Yes, I am. What about seven? Seventh? Yeah, yeah man. Alright, I've spoken to a few people what to do with these dampers. And what we've settled on is whacking a load of compression off the front. And also with the 225s on, we're going to increase the rear ride height and obviously adjust the alignment to suit. But yeah, that's the plan anyway. We've got an hour to do it all. Should be plenty of time. Does everyone have to do the car wheels? Everything's good, mate. Yeah, yeah. Well done, Tom. Yeah. 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 Philip Bright in his Honda Civic Type R and besides him is going to be number 37 Daniel Sylvester. On the second row on the inside it will be the number 36 car of Ryan Polly, another Type R and then the first of the Peugeots number 34 Will Self. On the third row of the grid on the inside we'll have number 67. So remember on Hot Hatch we do get it's definitely some electrical interference, I might have to look at that but we do get a green flag lap to warm up the car although a brand hatch green flag lap it's obviously not very long, but very, very uphill. We're starting at the most uphill part of the track, so 
on the outside as well. We've got a Fast 205 behind us, Metro, Clio, uh, Civic Civic, Fast Civic on our rear right. But we are starting on the front row, so all to play for. It's a full grid, so it'll take them a while to get stacked up behind us. And um, they're going to uh, claw their way out of that sort of hollow. It's kind of a compression Ooh. over the start line here. That, that slight rise, it's deceptive because when you're in a car, it looks actually steeper than it, uh, than it, it may do from the outside as you go up towards paddock. But, but uh, just moving around, just trying to get a little bit of uh, temperature into those uh, tyres. Uh, and these, of course, the front tyres will heat up quite quickly because they'll scrabble away for grip and uh, it'll be the backs that will be more difficult to, uh, to get any grip from initially. Interesting to see the different evolutions of, uh, of, of the Honda Civic uh, over the years. I remember Civics back in the 1970s, but uh, these, uh, there's two or three different types of Civic in the field and they, they get increasingly bulky and increasingly... Um, heavy, don't they, as the years go on? Yes, that's but right. But you can actually um, make an early one that's light, uh, really go well, really nimble. That car of Sylvester on the outside uh, of the front row. All right, so remember, change of strong quality. We've dropped compression out of the front dampers. We've increased some ride height at the rear to give us more frontal rake. That's about it. We've got the 225s on the front, of course, so it's going to be, they're not the freshest tyres, but I think um, I think it'll be better than, than what it was, simply because I'll have more confidence on the brakes as well. We had a lot of locking up of rear brakes with the 205s on the front, because I was not slowing down as what I thought, and I'm hoping bigger contact patch, because we are running quite a lot of camber, four and a half degrees at the front, so... With the 205, I just don't think the concept patch was Go on, man! The green flag now waves at the back, so very shortly we'll be into racing action, and the red light is on, and very shortly the light will go out, and it does so, and it's a better start from. Uh, Dan Sylvester from the second of the grid, Phil Wright very slow away, down to about fifth position I think as they head into Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. Jack Ashton's gone pretty well in his Metro, but he runs quite wide over the uh, concrete on the outside there, but they go up.
Sylvester and Pollock. Got a better lap from Sylvester this time round. He's managed to eke out a couple more uh, uh, length advantage. You can see how far behind the next group is. But uh, there's Polly in the bright blue car in the middle of your screens again. Breaks later, uses all the road going up in the paddock. And a 53.79 for Philip Wright uh, in third place. That's only, what, four hundredths of a second outside his own lap record. Yeah, and it's not even... Daniel Sylvester, he's just putting a lap on uh, the David Mees Day car. Sylvester going around the outside of the VW Corrado and uh, that's an unusual beast in this field. It is.
Go and make a move, kid. Polly, the two of them are side by side now, as you can see on the screen, and it is Polly just about fending off Dan Sylvester as they head down towards Graham Hill Bend. They're just coming up to lap the Class C lead battle as well, just to add complexity to the situation. Martin Paget, I think, ahead of that battle at the moment. Yes, he is in his sack, so ahead of Callum Perfect in the BMW. And we've got the three leads now right together. The Class A and overall leaders. And now uh, Sylvester leaves the door open for Phil right there on the inside as they come towards Clark Curve. Is he going to go through? He's been hung up to dry, hasn't he? Yeah, I think he has. So it looks like Wright's going to squeeze his way through to second place. Later on the brakes, though, is Dan Sylvester. Who locks the rear wheel, inside rear wheel, twice going into paddock. Wow, great stuff this. So Phil Wright's still not got second place sealed, has he? And he won't do. It's still got moves across in front of him. I think there may have been a little bit of contact there between the two as they turned into Druids that time. And he won't do. It's still got moves across in front of him. I think there may have been a little bit of contact there between the two as they turned into Druids that time. He's allowing Polly to make a little bit of an escape now. Well, about four or five car lengths. But Sylvester holds on. the yellow car and uh, yes there's damage on the front of that one as well yeah I think, uh, I think that's matching damage as Phil right now has a look at the inside as they go into Paddock Hill Bend but he can't carry the speed through there to make it up into second place they just over a second now behind the leader I think we've one more lap to go at the end of this one can Ryan Polly hold on I suspect he might be able to Where we're lifting, they're getting closer again. That's not 1.13 seconds between the uh, first and second at that point. So uh, they are maintaining their uh, their chase, but uh, Polly, you sense, has got this under control. Yeah, last lap ball is being shown to the drivers as they go past. 1.93 seconds now, the gap between Polly and uh, Dan Sylvester in second place, number 37, so 36, 37, and 63. Philip Wright in third position. Turning their way out of Druids for the final time, down to Graham Hill Bend once more. It's a half a lap to go here. If Polly makes a mistake, then certainly Sylvester and Wright are ready to pounce, but he's just got enough cars, he's not under direct attack for Polly, number 36, takes the check flag from number 37, Dan Sylvester, in second place. In third place, it's number 63, that's Philip Wright. The three of them covered by a second. Wow. That was quite the race. Fuck. I hope I've not damaged my wheel. Otherwise, we'll have to try and get them to change the tyre on it. Please, Mr. Polly, sorry. Oh, bit of debris in the track. Wow, that was some race. Fuck. You can tell it was good because I didn't speak. So yeah, front grip again limited, but we led the race for a while then though. Get me out of this car. Started P2, finished P2, P1 flight. 
five, six, seven laps. Yeah. With uh, Danny Sylvester. Dan, you had a, a real battle there to try and win the race. Yeah, it was good. Good racing with these two guys, as per usual, yeah. Hectic. I've got a right sweat on, but no, it was good. It's good fun. And racing a front-wheel drive car now this year, how's that compared to the MR2 before? Yeah, I'm still racing the MR2 as well, but it's vastly different. I'm really struggling with front grip, especially towards the end of that race, around the last car, and I was really struggling around paddock. Um, got some work to do on the car to develop it further, but yeah, so far so good. But that ECU sealed. Yeah. Oh, cheers, man. I actually don't think we're across as well. What did he say? It's the same spot. Always go to a nice spot, man. Well, at least you just got to put yeah, some cable we'll ties on go. it. Yeah, that's fine. Got some holes. No bother. Easy fix. Easy fix. How you doing? P6. P6, man. Fucking hell. Yeah, it's all that driver training, hasn't it? It is. It's a driver training, isn't it? So, Joe. P6, highest finish, highest qualifying and highest finish. Yeah. Oh, sky's the limit, man. You starting P4? Oh, because the reverse grid. Oof, spicy. Nice. Could have an indicator in the tyre. Nice start. Takes its win. I've not videoed for a little while. We've been a bit hectic, a bit busy. Quite a lot of changes for race two. Trying to get rid of this understeer. We're now running toe out on the rear which is a thing that's quite popular in the EP3. You shouldn't really have to do it on an EG. Remember, I've got super stiff rear springs, stiff rear bar and all that, but I think it's more that the front's too stiff as well, more than, you know, we can do all we want at the rear, but the front's always going to be too stiff. I think we're going to try a smaller roll bar next. That'll be the next thing we can try up front. Uh, but we've just done the alignment now, and it didn't have as much camber as what I thought it should have had. So, on my tables, it was four and a half front, four rear, as you'll recall, because you've all watched that video. And it was, although Josh just played with the camera a little bit there and raised the rear high dive, but we had three on the rear and only three and a half on the front. So that is not enough for these tyres. And unfortunately, it's a twat to do on the Civics. It's not so bad on the Skunk 2 arms, but now I'll switch those other arms. It is a twat to do. So we're not going to adjust it. Uh, the toes square on the front, two mil out on the rear. And yeah, hopefully we'll be all right. So yeah, more spicy alignment. See how that goes. You need to stop overworking the front tyres. That's all. We're starting on the front row, we're starting P2. So yeah, hopefully we'll be alright. It's just been a bit stressful those past couple of hours, just getting the car prepared in time. But look, fortunately I've got the good hands on here, we're a full pit crew today, so we've got it done. So, all's good. So I'll see you out there anyway, race two. Alright, we're just going to grid up now for the second race of Hot Hatch. We're starting P2, same position that we started in the first race. We had a good start, but misshifted obviously, try not to do that this time. Hot Hatch Championship, it is the second race of the weekend for these cars and the grid for this second race, determined by the results of the first, where we had a win for Ryan Polly from Daniel Sylvester and Philip Wright. In Class B, we had a win for Matthew Mantapira from Joel Arguelles, and in Class C, it was a win for Callum Perfect from Martin Padgett. So hopefully now the car turns anyway, if it's spicy then... We'll drive around it obviously, but it would be really nice to have some Honda vibes from this Honda. Maybe it's the weight that's doing it in a bit, but... It certainly doesn't feel crazy more uh, agile anyway. So we've got two mil tow out on uh, each wheel, so it's four mil total tow out of the back. It's quite a lot. Not very uh, dual wishbone Honda like, especially with such a strong rear spring, but yeah, the front's too stiff in it, so that's what it is. After three rounds, uh, round four about to take place, and you can see we've got this onboard view from number 37. That's the Dan Sylvester car, ex uh, Chris McCloy machine that he's taken over to race for this season. 
again. He's going to line up on the front row of the grid here. Next to Ryan Polly. Possibly some more, more ground in this one. That's another of these ZK2s, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So they are quick. They're lighter, of course, than the EP3s. And they have missing headlights, where presumably <laughs> sort of the air is ducted into um, <laughs> opposite missing headlights. Five second board is shown. About to go racing then for the second time this weekend for the PBS Brakes Hot Hats Championship. The red lights go out. The race gets underway. It's a good start from pole from the outside of the ship row, front row, I should say. Again, a poor start from Philip Wright, who's made a bit of a habit of that. Go on, Dan. Yes, boy. Dan Brown in the yellow car trying to get up on the inside of him and there's one off into the gravel trap I can see in the background that may well have been the car of Scott Smith I think number 27 up into third position here are the two leaders up at Druids Polly trying every which way to find a way past Dan Sylvester having his first season racing in hot hatch Patrick's got his own way in the seat there's no perfect uh, I've noticed yeah that's true he's uh, got a couple of cars between himself and Paul Warren in second place within that class Chris Woods third in class C at the moment on board here with Sylvester Making his way through clear ways now, still in the lead of the race by just a few car lengths from uh, Ryan Polly, Clio champion, stock catch champion in the past. Ryan Polly looking for a hot hatch title this year as well. Has had a good start to the season, three wins from three, leading the championship coming into this race. These two are nearly four seconds clear now of Philip Wright in third position. Wright lapping a a couple of tenths faster than Polly on the previous lap. But EP3 is a lot better than me on the brakes up there. As we've got uh, a big sideways moment for somebody there. The leader up at Clearways, the leader's coming up to the line now. The side by side for the leader of the race as they come up and over the line. It's Ryan Polly who's going to be on the inside line as they come to the line and he goes through at Paddock Hill Bend. So Ryan Polly takes the lead of the race at Paddock Hill Bend away from the second place car now, that is Dan Sylvester. Is Sylvester going to try and fight back? As you can see on screen now on the way up towards the hairpin at Druids. He's not, but there's going to be a lot of back markers to do with. About seven of them, I think, in the course of the next few corners. There's Polly on screen now. And you can see he's just ahead. as well they've got to do with Marcus. Yeah, it's fantastic isn't it, they've really got to work hard, it's, uh, you can see now from that driver's perspective from uh, Dan Sylvester's car, you 
to try to second guess where the uh, where the slower cars are going to go. They can't evaporate, that's for sure. And uh, through the middle there, ducking through the middle was Polly. That was uh, a really nice bit of work. But there's no room on the inside for uh, Sylvester. So he has to dive up the outside as well. He can outbreak these guys, and he's going to go shooting past. Oh, he's got a mini in front of him. That was really tight as he came across the red mini and. Uh, well, that was good reflexes, I'll tell you that much. He lost a lot of time, though, didn't he, to, to Ryan Polly there. He's locking up now as he's pushing on. I'm going to reach for the car signals <laughs> tablets there for a moment. I don't blame you. Um, but uh, he, he's got Philip Wright right with him as well now, of course. Uh, there you can see him. Uh, you've got one of the slower Clios just up ahead, so another back mark that they need to land. But this is playing into the hands a little bit of Ryan Polly, a bit as it did in the first race as well. We've got Dan Brown also coming through this. Some of the drivers were complaining about the traffic after the first race, but it's inevitable it's going to happen on a tight circuit like this. There's a yellow flag because someone is off at uh, McLaren towards Clearways. Is that one of the minis? I'm going to see. Oh, it's going second, half a second between them as they start this final lap of the race. then looking good for second victory today fourth of the season past the pit lane entrance so through Clark Kirby comes up the line Dan Silvestre is not going to be able to do anything about him the uh, checkered flag goes out another win for Ryan Polly then and the gap this time 0.51 seconds between number 36 Ryan Polly and number 37 Daniel Sylvester 63 Philip Wright was third 45 Dan Brown was fourth Fifth place goes the way of number 67, Ben Morton. Okay, now that was some race. Oh, he snuck past again and I just saw oh, a so similar pace. I guess where the racing experience comes in with Polly. Oh, he's some band to beat, isn't he? We're going to take a time. Oh, we're going to struggle, aren't we? Fuck. This, the incident that we had was very similar to the one that we did in the race one, to be honest. I, uh, I didn't see him there with the back markers, so... Ah, oh, fuck. That was some race. 
It's hard to say if the car felt better or not. We were still limited on front traction, so I don't know what we do. He's got like seven degrees of rear camber on that thing. Uh, we need to do testing, testing. I mean, the next round's at Mallory, and I've never driven it before, so we've got an MR2 day booked there, but that's all. Ah, well, another P2. Qualified second, finished second in the first race, finished second in the second race. See if we can grab a word with Dan. Um, it was going so well, and then it, it got was. quite difficult. Did you see the spin on the on the camera? Yeah, it was yeah, pretty spicy, that, weren't it? Yeah. We were on board when it went. Oh really? At like one yeah. point when you got, I think, the traffic into paddock again, and you had a big slide, didn't yeah, you? That's I what don't lost know it. where that slide came from. If something was yeah. down or what, but I was then really cautious about the car, thinking what's happening here, you know. But yeah, Ryan's some some driver. <laughs> <laughs> Try him about. He managed to sneak past, and then I was just driving fast, obviously trying to catch him up. But well, yeah, I was. I couldn't give it any more than that, so got some more work to do on the car before next time, I think. But yeah, feeling good about the second, second, second. <laughs> first, like first to but... come, won't it? Yeah, it might come eventually. <laughs> Keep trying. Good luck with that, and good luck tomorrow. We'll see you then. Five, ten minutes time. Keep work on arms. If I've got anything, you shouldn't be this side. Thank you. Some race, wasn't it? It was <laughs> sick. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, hectic man. Yeah, we were just watching the traffic, but Paulie just seemed to like split it like the Red Sea. It was crazy fucking man. They must see his car behind, I think. <laughs> Shit, it's Ryan Polly. <laughs> must vacate must the premises. <laughs> That's awesome. Right. right, second race done. So this is our second event in the EG. Qualified second, finished second, and then finished second again. Oh, what's going around here? EP freeze. Oh, one fully sideways. But he's got it, got it back. But yeah, Ooh, spicy one that. So we put two mil toe out on each rear wheel, and which is four mil total, obviously quite a lot. I could feel it a bit different, but ultimate, ultimately not that much. There's some action going on in this Civic, Civic race. Let's have a look at turn one, they're coming around, the start finish straight now. Anyway, successful day in the EG, yep, successful day. Thanks to all the pit crew of course, everyone helped me out, it's been a big effort today. Obviously with the crash damage from race one and then we've been working on the car flat out between quali and race one and then in race one and race two. We've not had a chance to, to do anything. I should have put the head cam on really and, and got more of the action, but it was a, it was it was definitely a hectic one. Um, the racing's not done for this weekend. We've got the MR2 Championship tomorrow. We'll be obviously in the Class B car again. Hoping I can do pretty well in that. As I said yesterday, we were two tenths off the lap record for my class. So yeah, fingers crossed we can uh, we can hold some good pace. Oh, he's sideways. <laughs> Very nice. Very busy grid type our trophy, look. Four. Very busy grid. This is what happens when you're rushing about flat out between quality and race one and race one and race two. He's not had his daily Lucas Aid count today. How many Lucas Aids you had today? Only one. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Integra done very well today. I think it's his best finish, is it? Maybe? It is, yeah. yeah. He was fifth in the uh, Fifth and last. In the assembly area. She looks sporty, doesn't she? Let's get a shot of this rake. That is some very sporty rake. So two trophies on the top, two second places in our second event in the Civic. They say it's all the twos. Yeah, two, two, two. So still some work to do on the car. Need to try and find the front grip. Where, however, we do. There's multiple players we can do that. The simplest way, Josh, is. 18mm front anti-roll bar. Don't just whisper it, but yeah, a smaller front anti-roll bar. It's currently got 98 spec JDM front and rear, which are big boys, um, which is fine for a softly sprung JDM 
Integra with its soft, what are they, three kilo springs or something standard, but um, yeah, that's just, that's just the easiest thing I can try and um, the only issue we're going to be is it's, it's slightly lighter than this one by a couple of kilos, but I think we're alright with the weight anyway, we've been weighed twice, twice today, but I was 11.02 the second time, so uh, we're, we're in spec, our ECU still sealed, so I don't know what they want to do about that, they might send me an email asking me to go to a, a dyno or something like that, or they might bring a dyno to the next event or something and hope that the ECU is still sealed. So yeah, two second places. Thanks to the remaining pit crew and the discard admins. <laughs> right, so I'm racing in my two tomorrow as I said, so I'll see you there. Oh, we'll do a rake shot for the Patreon numbers, names. Yeah. A rake shot for the Patreons, yeah. Get that out of the way. That long enough to reckon. <laughs> <laughs>